One of the questions I get asked more than any other is, Shane, what is that widget you're using? So today I'm gonna effectively answer that question and then some. I'm gonna go over some of my favorite widgets to use on my Surface Duo 2, but of course this is applicable to any Android phone because widgets are a universal feature of Android. So let's jump into some widgets. So the first one that I get asked all the time is a really simple widget and it's right here on my home screen. It just simply has the day, the time, and the date. People ask me all the time, what is that widget? And it's actually kind of surprising. It comes from a weather app called Overdrop and it works really well. If you click on the day, it's gonna open up your calendar. If you click on the time, it's gonna open up your clock app. Super nice, works really, really well. And Overdrop has a ton of widgets to choose from. As you can see here, like I said, there are a ton. They all look really, really good. I believe some of these are behind a paywall, but I believe it is a single purchase that I made some time ago, so I have access to all of them. There are a ton and they look really good. I actually employ an overdrop widget in another place as well, because obviously on my desktop, that one's not gonna actually go to overdrop. So if I come over here to my widgets on the side of my Surface Duo, this is the one that I use for kind of at a glance weather. And if I click on it, it will actually open up the application. It's a good app. It has your temperature over time. It has the wind, the rain, also percentages over time, as well as the amount. You've got a radar in here, I believe, as well. Long forecasts. It's a really solid app, but I believe, like I said, some of this is behind a paywall. Simply search for Overdrop in the Play Store. The other one that I use on my normal desktop here is the Google Photos app. And you can see here it is displaying a lovely photo of my girl Copper. And it's basically just part of Google Photos. It should already be on your device, whatever it is. You probably have that simply long pressure screen. And you are looking for people and pets. You'll drag that over and then you can select what people or pets you want it to display. And then from there, at random intervals, it seems, I guess it's probably a time interval, it will change what photo it is showing. If I click on this photo to open it, when I go back, it should switch to another photo. This was our attempt at getting a Christmas photo a few years back. And you can see it's going just great. She's not looking, he's rolling around. This is a great photo all around. And it will just simply switch between the photos that you like to have. I love having that one there. It pulls up nice memories all the time. Moving back over to my widgets panel, there are a few things in here to point out. So this first one here is one I've been testing. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not because I don't think it's really doing any good. Occasionally my phone will get kind of sluggish and I'll need to reboot it. This might happen every few days. So I was testing a theory that I could use a RAM clearing app like this to stop whatever it was and to fix it. It doesn't seem like that's really helping. However, if you'd like to see how this app works, it's really good. You click on it and by my settings, it will close running apps, free some memory, and it would also delete my cache. And it does seem to make the phone run a little bit faster, but that weird bogging down thing when it starts, that kind of puts it off and it comes back again. Only a full reboot seems to fix it for me. This app can also be found in the Play Store under Droid Optimizer. It was an app that has pretty good reviews and for that purpose, it's working rather well. Another app I've been using lately because I'm someone who is prone to forget to eat or drink food and water during the course of the day is Hydrillo. It's a really, really useful app. I like having my widget here. You can see that I am ahead of pace for my hydration for the day. And if I get behind my pace, it's gonna give me a notification and that you can actually set what size, you can kind of set custom icons there for what sorts of things you do intake. So let's say I get behind, I run to the kitchen and I drink an eight ounce glass of water. I can get a notification and click that in that notification once I'm behind, or if I do it ahead, I can swipe over to my widget here and click on eight ounce and it will fill that up and it will keep me updated as to how much fluid I have actually drank in a day. It has actually been really useful for me for that exact purpose. I am staying better hydrated because of this app. The notifications are really useful, but the widget is great to have as well. It is called Hydrillo in the Play Store. I know it just says water tracker there, but you're gonna wanna search for Hydrillo to find it. I am a big weather nerd. I like having a radar in a widget. I use my radar for this purpose. If I click on this, it should launch the app itself. It's a really solid go away. 
a very solid uh, countrywide radar app. You can see we got some pop-up storms here. Now, this is not my go-to app of choice when it comes to like really drilling into the weather. This is just a good one to kind of see the broader picture, but it's really, really good. It is called My Radar, or you might look for My Radar Pro because it has some additional cool stuff going on there, and it is worth the purchase if you are a bit of a weather nerd as well. Keep in mind, this is going to need access to your location at all times, and all of these widgets, this is true of all of them, the more widgets you pile up, the more battery drain you will incur over time. So what about a calendar widget? I find these things to be really, really Really useful. I have a hard time keeping track of things and this is a really good way to kind of augment that behavior. I've got two here on the screen, one that I use and another just kind of alternative idea here. So the first one up top here is literally just called Calendar Widget, okay? And I believe I paid a little bit of money to have options to go in and customize this, but you can make this widget look any way you want for the most part. You can really get in there, dig in and change the colors around. It's simple, it looks good, and it is useful. The other one though, has a lot more going on in terms of preset appearances. It is called month. Now the biggest thing about it that I will point out is that while it does have a ton of different options, a lot of them you'll see are locked. If I scroll down far enough, a lot of these are not locked as you can see, but let me find some. Okay, there you go. 28 pages, but I would say like half of them are locked and it will require a payment of some kind to either purchase them or to unlock them in some way. But again, it is a pretty solid calendar widget as well that has a lot of different looks. I'm going to stick with my old calendar widget. I'm going to go ahead and uninstall this one just because I don't like having two calendars there. This was just there for your benefit. Another one you may already have on your phone, but maybe you're not using the widget is OneNote. You can see down here at the bottom. I use OneNote all the time. You can see, in fact, I organize my list of widgets in OneNote, and there it is. So I can see my most recently edited notes. If I click on one, it's gonna open up OneNote and take me straight to that particular one. You can also quickly add a photo, a voice note. You can take notes right there from it. It is super, super useful if you are someone that does use OneNote. Kind of back in the world of calendars though is something called Sectograph, and it's really interesting. You can place this widget on your desktop or in that widget feed. And what it's going to do is it's not just going to show you the time and the date, but it's also going to show you what is on your calendar and then what time it is. So I have things on here like my dog's birthday, Independence Day, and I just paid for my Squarespace subscription for the year. But those are all all day events. So they start up there at the top. If these were like appointments and they were at particular times, they would actually be placed on the widget at that particular time. So if you're someone that has a lot of timed events, meetings and so forth to keep track of, Sectograph is probably a really good option for me. I tend to make my own schedule and I very rarely have something that I have to do at a particular time. So not super useful to me, but I found this one going across the best widgets on Android and I thought it looked really good. And for a lot of you people that have jobs, like real actual, you know, not like me, made up jobs, a real job, uh, it might be really useful. And last but not least, I wanted to give a shout out to At A Glance, which is part of Google. Let's drag this onto my desktop somewhere. Can I just make a new page to make space for it? I used to use this widget for so long. This was my like, go-to widget because it is so clean, it is so minimalistic, it has the date, the day of the week, the weather, which if you click on, it's going to pull up Google's weather, which is fine. And then if you have something on your calendar upcoming, it will actually appear down here below. That it is super, super simple, but there's a reason that I ran that widget for years. Well, there you go. That is a list of some of my favorite most used widgets on Android. Sound off in the comments down below what widgets you cannot possibly live without and what it is about them that makes them so indispensable to you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.